Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about a red headlamp for amateur astronomers. I know it sounds like a trivial subject, but it's not. All amateur astronomers should have a good red headlamp. It's essential. Every amateur astronomer should own at least one red headlamp, if not two or three. I own several red headlamps in my constant quest to find the perfect red headlamp. The reason you need a red headlamp is that the human eye is not as sensitive to the color red. And so the red will not ruin your dark adaptation when you go outside to stargaze at night. It won't affect it as much as a white light will. When I first started out in amateur astronomy all those years ago, the books would always say to put a piece of red cellophane on your flashlight or paint the flashlight with red nail polish. And that's what I did. This was before the advent of red headlamps. So I used a flashlight with red nail polish on the end of it for years until they came out with red headlamps, which are superior to a flashlight because you can put it on your head and then that frees up your hands to move the telescope around or change your eyepieces or look for an eyepiece, things like that. So I think the headlamp is better than a red flashlight. And I also believe that the ideal red headlamp should also have a white light on it because at the end of your session, you'll want a, a white light when you're ready to put everything away. And a white light will help you so you don't drop something or lose something while you're tearing everything down and putting it away. And also for me, I want a white light in case I hear a strange noise nearby. I know you probably think this is extremely exciting, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. There's a moose up there, but people are trampled by moose all the time and it won't go away. I don't know if I can continue this experiment. Hello, moosey friend. Can you go eat somewhere else, please? Because I want to know what it is. <laughs> in case it's a wild animal. <laughs> Probably this is not something that concerns most of you, but where I live, it's a constant concern. And <clears throat> I'm always hearing strange noises nearby when I'm stargazing and it scares me if I don't know what it is. Anyway, the red headlamp for astronomy should have a red light and a white light, but it should not make you scroll through the white light to get to the red light. You should be able to get to the red one right away. There should ideally be two separate buttons for red and for white. If you have a red headlamp and when you turn it on, the first thing you see is a white light, then throw it away. It's no good. Those are going to blind you right off the bat. And the light should not be very bright either. It doesn't need to be 500 lumens. Check how many lumens a headlamp is before you purchase it. There's no need to have a red headlight that is 500 lumens. A red light doesn't affect your night vision as much as a white light does, but it will diminish your night vision a little bit if it's too bright. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons, among many others, that sketching is so hard because you have to point your red headlight at your piece of paper to see what you're sketching. And then when you go back to the eyepiece, you're not gonna see as much, even with the red light. And if you look at the red light for a long time, it gets even worse. So don't go out and buy some super bright red headlamp. 500 lumens is way too bright you probably only need about 20 lumens or 100 lumens maximum on your red headlight. So these are the things that you need to look for when you go out to purchase a red headlamp. Number one, does it have separate buttons for the white light and the red light? Number two, 
is the red light not overly bright, 20 to 100 lumens or so? Number three, is it comfortable on your head? Number four, what kind of batteries does it take and can it be recharged? And number five, how much does it cost? Although they're generally pretty cheap. And so let me show you some red headlamps that I've tried out and tell you what I think about them and what's my favorite. I'll start with this Coast headlamp I saw in Home Depot recently. It's made by Coast and the model number is RL10. I saw it and I got very excited and I bought it because <clears throat> it has a light on the front and a light on the back. And the light on the back is red only. And I thought, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's an improvement because you'll never uh, make a mistake and accidentally press the wrong button and blind yourself with the white light. <clears throat> which, believe me, I have done many times before. But I don't recommend this headlamp. I bought it for $15, I think, but when I got home and I started using it that evening, I realized it has some flaws and it was a bad purchase. Yes, the light on the back is only red, so there's no chance of hitting the wrong button if you use the back light, but the red light on it is in a fixed position and you can't adjust it. So that's no good. And secondly, it's 500 lumens, which is way too bright for astronomy. And the first time that you press the button on the backlight, um, it flashes, which is a small thing, but you have to press the button twice to get to the constant red light, which may or may not be pointing where you want it to be pointing because <laughs> you can't tilt it. The light on the front can be adjusted, but it's too bright and it makes you go through the white light first before getting to the red one. So this one's no good <laughs> and it's too bright. So don't buy the Coast RL10 headlamp. The RL10 is flawed, but it does have a lining on the strap, which is very comfortable on your head if you need a headlamp to repair your tractor at night or something like that. Coast makes another excellent headlamp for astronomy, or I think it's for astronomy, that has a separate button on the top for the red light and a button on the bottom for the white light. It's great, uh, but I don't like it because of this strap that goes over the top of your head. And that bothered me and it smashed my hair down <laughs> or, or my hat most likely, but it's not too bright and you can adjust the tilt of the lamp and it runs off three AAA batteries. But I went to Coast website recently and apparently it was discontinued. I didn't see it and I don't know what the model number of this is. I bought it at, at Ace, I think. I don't know, but they have a new improved headlamp with separate buttons for red and white and you can get it in a two pack from Coast directly for 39 US dollars. And the model number is FL84. And you can change the output to lower the lumens on that headlamp. Another headlamp that I really like but I can't find anymore is this Energizer headlamp. It comes in different colors. This one is green. And you press the right side for the red light. And the middle button can change it. To the white light. This one is great. It's not too bright and it's a simple design and I like it but I couldn't find it anymore. They didn't have it at Ace. All the current models appear to only have a white light as far as I could tell and I went to Ace which is where I bought it and they no longer carry it. At least my Ace didn't. Another headlamp that has a separate button for the red light and the white light is the head torch with red light from the company 
move, shoot, move that makes star trackers. <clears throat> the star tracker that Alan Dyer uses. Since they make a nice star tracker, you would think that they would make a high quality headlamp. And it is. It's a nice headlamp. It has a very stylish strap and it can be recharged with a USB, micro USB cable, which is nice. And it's not too bright. My only complaint is that unlike every other headlamp that I have, the red light button is on the left. And I'm constantly blinding myself accidentally by pushing the right button, which is for the white headlamp on this particular model. Other than that, I think this is a good headlamp. And it was only $17, I think. I have two other headlamps. I have this Vecchia that has two buttons. One on the right is the red light, <laughs> and the one on the left is the white light. And unlike the Move, Shoot, Move headlamp, uh, they're in the right place where I think they should be. And it's very straightforward, and I like it. And it runs off three 3A batteries. And I recommend this headlamp if you can find it. I think I bought it on Amazon, and I think it was only nine US dollars or something like that. And finally, I have this black diamond headlamp that I bought from REI that has a button on the right for a red light but it only lights one side of the headlamp, which is weird, but I guess it's okay. It won't be too bright, but it can be confusing to get to the white light because even when you press the left side, <laughs> nothing happens. Sometimes it's still red. It's more complicated than it needs to be. I need to quickly get to the white light at times if a wild animal suddenly comes. So I don't recommend this black diamond model. And I don't recommend the Coast RL10. It's too bright and it has too many flaws. I have one more. I have this Husky multicolor dimmable headlamp that I bought at Home Depot. It's too bright at 550 lumens. And the red light is on the left, which I'm not used to. And to turn it on, you have to go through the flashing to get to the solid red. And to turn it off, you have to go through green. I just got this one because I'm going to use it. I got two to test a battery soon. I recommend the Vecchia if you can find it or the Move, Shoot, Move torch. As long as you remember, the red button is on the left. And I'm sure there are many other choices out there. But those are the ones that I've personally tested out. Just be sure it's not too bright and it should have a separate button for red and a separate button for white. And if you can't afford a second headlamp, just be sure to always take extra batteries with you when you go out for a night of stargazing because you don't want to be out there with no light. It needs to be a good operational red headlamp and it's essential for amateur astronomers. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.